In this video, we're going to talk about the strategy that you use for working with PD. So first of all, we'll talk about the various concepts that are involved with uh, PD. These correspond almost exactly to the concepts of SD that you've already seen, right? So a sentence is derivable in PD from a set of sentences gamma, if and only if there's a derivation in which all the primary assumptions are members of gamma and P occurs within the scope of only the primary assumptions. And of course, we write it using the single turn style, same as in SD. And then an argument of PL is valid in PD if and only if the conclusion is derivable from the set of the premises. Uh, and then P is a theorem of, of PD if and only if it's derivable from the empty set. And then we write this with just the single turn style and then the sentence. Uh, two sentences are equivalent in PD if and only if they are derivable from each other. And a set of sentences is inconsistent in PD if and only if there is at least one sentence. And of course, as we talked about earlier, if and only if, in fact, all such sentences. Um, such that, anyway, gamma both entails that sentence and entails that its negation. Um, <clears throat> now, PD is sounding complete. And what that means then is that these will hold whenever the corresponding quantificational concepts do. So uh, P is derivable from gamma if and only if gamma quantificationally entails P. Uh, two sentences are equivalent in PD if and only if the quantificational equivalent, et cetera. But remember the PD is not decidable um, and the same with PL, right? So there's no algorithm for, or no algorithm that's guaranteed to terminate terminate for determining when these uh, these concepts hold. Okay, so let's start looking at the strategy then for working with PD and establishing, you know, well, as well as we can, given the lack of decidability, when these things hold. Um, the main elements of strategy in SD, these will all also apply to PD. So you should alternate between working top down and bottom up. This is the most important part of working with PD, same as it's the most important part of working with SD. Know when to make assumptions. And when you're looking at sentences where the main logical operator is one of the SD connectives, then you're going to be making assumptions still on the basis of, you know, on the same basis as uh, when you would you know, when you, if, you know, if you were just working in SD, uh, watch for familiar patterns and use whatever's worked before. Again, that's still really crucial. Um, in SD, we talked about using truth tables to guide your strategy. Um, you can do that with interpretations, but because of the fact that PL isn't decidable, this is much, much more limited. So for example, you can construct an interpretation to prove that a set does not entail a sentence. And this, you can use this to rule out like a, you know, a certain approach to a derivation because you would use this to show that you can't derive a particular sentence from your, uh, from your assumptions because those assumptions don't actually entail that, that sentence. Um, so that is something that can be useful sometimes. However, you can't, you know, do things like, for example, constructing an interpretation that shows or that proves that your assumptions are inconsistent. So that sort of thing, um, you end up having to eyeball things like this. And you, there's a lot more guesswork in cases like this when you're working with, uh, with PD. You don't have, um, you don't have a, you know, mechanical procedure like truth tables to guide it. Um, like you do with SD. So, like I said, the uh, the most important part of working with PD is um, is the alternating between you know working top down, and working bottom up. So let's talk about that for a bit. Uh, when you're working top down, you should um, apply you know uh, universal elimination to universally quantified sentences. And when you do this, you want to use constants that are found in your goal sentences or that are found in previous lines. Uh, you generally don't want to just do this blindly for brand new constants. Um, that typically is just going to be a waste of time. So you don't just want to like look and see, oh, okay, I've got a universally quantified sentence here. I'm just going to instantiate this for some constant that's new to my derivation. You generally don't want to do that. 
um, wait until you've got a goal sentence that's got a constant in it and then instantiate them. Um, uh, when you've got an existentially quantified sentence at the top of your derivation, then apply existential elimination to it um, using constants that aren't found in any open assumptions. Um, this is a very, very important thing when you're working uh, top down. Um, you know, working bottom up, uh, that of course depends on what your goal sentence looks like. So if your goal is a universally quantified sentence, then generally what you're going to want to do is derive it for an arbitrary constant, one that doesn't occur in any open assumptions, and then apply a universal introduction. That's typically the best way to find a, to get a universally quantified sentence, unless you know, from looking at what you've got previously in the derivation, you can see an easier way to do it. That's typically your best bet. Uh, if your goal is an existentially quantified sentence, then usually, again, your best bet is going to be you derive that sentence for some constant and then apply existential introduction. And the constant here doesn't have to be something that doesn't occur in open assumptions, right? You know, the, it can be anything at all. So um, it can be something that occurs in your assumptions. It could be, um, you know, something that you that you introduce when you're, um, you know, from existential elimination or something like that. Typically, the way that you're going to find this constant, the, the best way to do it is, is working top down until you figure out what constant it is that you're going to be applying it for. Um, that's generally the way that you would go about finding that. Um, so that's the um, strategy and sort of an outline. And then we'll look at uh, we'll look at some examples of how this works in uh, in derivations. Um, before doing that, though. We should quickly talk about this, because if you're anything like me, there are going to be lots of times when you go through, you complete an entire derivation, and then you realize that you derived like for all X, blah, 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 and what you were actually supposed to get was for all Y, blah, blah, blah. So you need to know how to change variables in quantifier. So to change the variables in universal quantifier, you, um, you do universal elimination first uh, for a constant that is not found in any open assumptions. Remember, that's crucial. And then you just do universal introduction. So it's just an easy two-step move to change the variables. Um, same, basically the same thing for changing the variables in a, in a um, uh, existential quantifier. Uh, you just use existential elimination. And of course here too, this has to be a constant that's new to uh, not found in any open assumptions, right? I've picked E here because it's one that like, I don't think anybody ever uses E. Um, then you just do existential introduction in the uh, the existential elimination subderivation because then you can pull it out using existential elimination, and then you've you've switched the variables around there as well. 